Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man has been treasured with a professional record of 13 wins and 3 losses and won no contest. He stands 170 centimeters tall and weighs already 61.3 kilograms. Representing Shoot and Box, Diego Lima. Give it up and fight it out of San Paulo, Brazil. Make some noise for the challenger, Felipe Efrain. And his opponent, the champion, fighting out of the red corner. The fan of his first order is on the best record of 11 wins and two losses. He stands. 174 centimeter tall and weighs already 61.1 kilograms. Representing Team Black High and fighting out of Baguio City in the Philippines. Give it up for the reigning, defending, undisputed Great Combat Federation Bantamweight Champion of the World, Steven. Sniper Loba! For fighter instructions, referee Mark Goddard. Brave may be making a journey soon to the Philippines, but until then, this is as close as we can get. There's a huge Filipino contention in this crowd. Shorty, this must be one you're, you're quite interested in, given uh, Loman's background as a Wushu Sanda expert. Yeah, I mean, overall for me, I commentated the very first Brave event where Steven Loman fought Franz Malambo the very first time, and he came back from adversity after, I believe, breaking his nose in the first round and is just pushing forward and finally getting the win. And Felipe Efrin fought with me back in Titan FC and given it didn't work out in his favor, but he fought the champion at the time before I became champ and was very dominant as well. So overall, both these fighters, I've seen them fight. They're very aggressive and I'm, I'm a bantamweight as well. I was a double weight class champ. So me looking at them, it's, it's a nice studying time, but overall, it's entertaining as a fan as well. Absolutely. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, Stephen Lohman is the only person to go not one, not two, or three, but eight rounds with Franz Malambo and live to tell the tale. Yeah, Franz Malambo, and I've trained with him, part of KHK MMA. He was an IMUF world champion with me as well in 2016. That guy, besides his length, he hits and throws bricks at you. I mean, this guy has the length to do it. And to the way Stephen Lohman was able to diminish that length take him down and beat him up on the on the ground and win two fights was phenomenal. A very cerebral Ooh. fighter is Steven Lohman. Knows how to make quick in-round adjustments, but he is going against the walking highlight reel in Felipe Efrain. Oh. And again, Felipe Efrain, from seeing him back in the day, He's aggressive. It doesn't matter what he takes. He's always going to push forward. So Steven Lohman has to time his shots properly, throw combinations, even with that head kick, throw combinations, set it up properly. Because if not, Felipe Efren's going to counter you and just keep pushing forward. One thing we haven't seen much of in Brave Combat Federation is the ground game of Felipe Efrain. We've seen him defend a few takedowns against Nauras Abzakh, but we've not quite seen his guard game. And it'd be interesting to see if Steven does end up taking him to the ground, just how he fares. Oh. And again, both still just feeling each other out. Felipe taking that head kick but blocking it, walking forward still. Again, staying very calm, staying shelled up a little bit, not opening up too much. So we'll see what happens in the second half of the first round.
Do you feel that Loman needs to throw more combinations? It seems like at the moment he's just picking single strikes. Yeah, and that's the thing is with single strikes, statistically, there's not much you're possibly going to land. More than likely, you're going to miss that shot. So use it as a setup. Throw the second one. Throw the third one. Keep it basic. There's no reason to go super advanced, main the beginning of the fight. But remember, if you're going to go for those takedowns like that, get close. What's going to get you close? The strikes. The strikes. Absolutely. Do you want to make a note? Loman's first attempt at a double leg was completely shut down. Oh. And again, Felipe Ephraim being the bigger opponent here, but walking forward, he might be the stronger guy as well. You see him just no matter what he gets hit with, walking his opponent down and showing that, hey, man, I want to battle. I want to stand and bang. Efrain, a favorite of none other than uh, Grabaka Hitman, Mr. Kaposa. Ooh, beautiful left hand. Either way, it caught Steven Lohman off balance, and that's why he immediately went down for the shot. He was pushed against the fence, and now it's his turn to grab his opponent, push him against the fence, and possibly go for that takedown. Nice. Oh! Lohman's out. And then Lohman, he's very good Ooh. at coming back from adversity, landing that big left hand, that big left kick to the body, always pushing forward no matter what. I saw that with Franz Malambo firsthand, so I never, you know, put that guy out of the game. But Felipe Efren showing he's bigger, possibly even stronger, and a little more technical on the feet. Felipe doing a good job of just circling, keeping the pressure on Loman, making the cage small when he has to. You know, Felipe's a little more aggressive, or usually a little more aggressive, but he's facing a wrestler. Yep. So the fact is, you don't want to, you know, we saw in the last fight, don't push too forward, don't push too hard or aggressive, because you'll get taken down. Man, that spinning back kick was fast. First round over. Gentlemen, who did you like in that round? Well, that's a good question. I'd have to, if I, I mean, if I had to pick, I would probably go for Felipe just based on his aggression, his forward pressure. And that's the way I look at it as well. Aggression. He took the center of the mat we hold, the whole time, was able to counter with strikes just like this, even possibly go for the sweep, but pushing his opponent off and trying to make this a stand-up battle. We see Steven Lohman always going for that head kick, but Felipe always walking down his opponent no matter what. Counter with that big left hand going, you know, two, three, and we see him just pushing the pace always. Again, I give that round to Felipe Efren. What about you, Kerek? It's unanimous, gentlemen. I believe this round is 10 9, Felipe Efren. But it's only the first round in a five round fight. There's a lot that can happen tonight. Cage door closes, almost locked the cameraman in. Again. <laughs> hey, they just want to get a closer look. Yeah, so be it. <laughs> Round two, here we go. Touch of hands. These two gentlemen were posing for pictures earlier in the week, showing what this sport's really all about, which is sportsmanship character, courage? Well, it's a lot of camaraderie. There's no reason to do all the smack talk. Our smack talk is done with our fists, our knees, our elbows, and so be it so much more inside the cage. So we're just going to do our job. It's no, you know, it's just business, nothing personal. I always say for my competitors is we're all after the same goal. It just so happens that we're all in each other's way. Perfectly put, Shorty. Again. Quoting it. Copyright right there. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Ephraim stalking, trying to get a reaction out of his opponent. Loman's punches are just falling just short. And again, he's a little timid. You know, he was hit with some nice significant strikes, mainly that big left hand, but he switches that kick. Instead of going high, he goes to the body, and that landed pretty flush. Beautiful oh, single. Loman puts him down! And that chain wrestling was amazing. Going for that single leg, couldn't get it, and immediately went for the outside sweep. Crowd is loving it. Felipe back on his feet. Did a phenomenal job with that takedown. But 
And like you said, Felipe Efren immediately getting back up, creating that space. But them going back and forth and trading. Steven Lohman needs to set up that shot again and transition, chain wrestle like he did before. He's not able to get that first shot as we saw multiple times already, but he transitioned that second time to that outside trip. Oh, Ooh. beautiful right hand. Ooh. And when we see when we have a counter fighter in Felipe Efren, he is eventually gonna, you don't get hit by punches if you throw combinations. Oh my goodness. Guards in. How tight is this? That looks pretty tight. Loman staying nice and calm, not immediately going to the to the hand, so I don't know how tight it Mark is. Mark Goddard on it. Referee is making sure neither fighter's in danger. And Mark Goddard doing a phenomenal job trying to see if his opponent is asleep or not. Efrain showing incredible power with that core, not letting his opponent move. Felipe Efrain needs to get on his side so he can arch all the way. If he stays on his back, it's all muscle strength right here. There's only so far your body can extend. Felipe needs to get that right hip down like he's doing right there. Now he can extend. And, and he's out. Beautiful job by Steven Loman. Again, the man never stops and he always comes back from adversity. So we'll see, but we see a Felipe Efren immediately locking that hand. Looked like he was gonna transition to the arm bar, but again, both of them always work in phenomenal fight. Incredible work by both athletes. Oh! Loman making him pay brutally for that submission attempt. Beautiful hammer fist, elbows, transitioning to different things. Wow. Oh, my God. It's not just a rain of punches, it's a hurricane of punches and elbows coming down. And again, Steven Loman saw the opening. He knew there was an open guard, stepped over the half guard, and he's landing ground and pound. He has that right underhook there, which is going to keep Felipe Efren down. Now that left hand hopefully gets free and he can land those significant strikes. But right now, Felipe Efren blocking that arm. Seems like a cut has opened up over the right eye of Felipe Efrain. And the crowd here really getting behind their champion, Steven Lohman. Again, Bahrain's a home of many, many Filipino. And so this is a huge fight for them. Felipe looked, looking for the beginnings of a leg lock, but was denied. Beautiful and here elbows. comes that rain. Wow, you can just hear him from here, and we have the headsets on. <laughs> You could literally feel the cage rumble. Oh my God, what an ebb and flow this round has been. Loman making him carry his weight. Beautiful job. He's going to try to get out that back door. Oh, Steven Loman oh. just seeing everything coming, spinning, circling, not letting you get that heel hook, knee bar, or positions. Wow, beautiful work. Ryan getting rocked from guard. 20 seconds to go in this round. I mean, I was a fan before, but wow. Ephraim trying to hold on, ride this round out. He's Short trying. time now. Beautiful left hand. That's it. Woo! <laughs> what a round. What an unbelievable round. And now, what do you say? It goes 1-1. One, one. What's that mean? This is a fight. 100% shorty. Couldn't agree with you more. The big question in my mind right now, no, forget that. Let's go to the replay. Shorty, now look at what we're seeing. Seaman Lohman going for that single, didn't get it. Felipe Efren brought that leg down, so he went for the outside trip, and he landed it perfectly, being able to extend his leg all the way out. But we see that combination, landing that right hand at the end. Beautiful rocking Felipe's head back, pushing forward, eventually getting them down, and we see this vicious ground and pound with elbows from both sides, eventually transitioning to hammer fist and getting that half guard position, staying on top. Again, beautiful elbows that we can hear thumping all the way over here, even with the headsets on. And just positivity from the Filipino side and the Filipino crowd in the stands right now. It's amazing. If you were in the corner of Felipe Efrain, what would you be telling him now? Felipe Efrain, yes, Steven Loman's going for the shots. We know that. But we know we can defend those as well. You defended all of them except for one. 
So what are you gonna do now? You should walk forward. You can always keep him against the fence, so push him against the fence. Make this a grinding battle back. If he grabs you, yes, then eventually throw your elbows, move back. But you need to start making this more of a brawling type of fight. You are the better, more technical stand-up fighter, but don't be timid about getting taken down. You shouldn't, you can get back up. Use your strikes to your advantage. And I believe he needs that. Again, they both rocked each other in yeah. every, you know, in, in both rounds. So it's a thing of they need to make this a fight. Steven Loma needs to set up a shot. If not, throw those combinations to get that single leg, to get that double and transition to chain wrestling. Felipe Ifra needs to start extending that jab and keep Steven Loma at a proper striking distance so he can't get the shot in. Beautiful body shot. I believe this is the first time Philippe Ebrahim has ever seen the third round inside the Brave Combat Federation cage. And again, it just shows how much of a champion Steven Lohman is. He is a very good champion. He's much deserving of that belt. And if you're going to beat him, or for example, if I'm Steven Lohman, if you're going to beat me, I'm going to make you work for it. Beautiful Ooh, straight left. Nowhere. And again, I think Steven Loman getting a little more confidence in the feet. Oh, he's threatening the guillotine again. Nope, doesn't get it. Oh, oh. heavy left hand Both of them. there. Felipe needs to start throwing those jabs, throwing those one-twos, and pushing the pace when it comes to the stand-up game. Right now, you know, Steven Loman's dictating this fight. Yeah. He's really wrestled back control of this fight after that first round. And again, Felipe might be exhausted that second round. You took so many significant shots. You got taken down. You got ground and pounded. It's demoralizing as well. He held that guillotine for quite some time yeah, as well. Yeah, and again, that's a lot of arm strength, and it's a lot of arm conditioning. Your arms can only endure so much. But again, you have 25 minutes to fight. You need to swallow your pride and push forward. Loman you know, took a deep breath there. Yeah, exactly. And something I always tell you know, some of my fighters coming up is if you don't attack, then what are your, what, what's your opponent going to do? He's going to attack and take full advantage, and that's what Steven Loman's doing. And again, you can follow him all you want. You can cut off the cage like he's doing, but he needs to throw some type of strikes, even if they're not full committed, just putting them out there and making Steven Loman think instead of just move freely as well. That's true. He hasn't been very active with his strikes this round, uh, Efrain. In the corner of Loman, we have not only the head of Team Lakai, Mark Sangyao, but also Steven's father. Oh. Beautiful left counter. Steven doing a good job of throwing his strike and getting away. And we see how much slower Felipe looks. He's throwing his punches, but when he's throwing them, he's winging them, just going hard. But he lands a significant strike there, pushing Steven Loman back, but then he stops moving. And now you see Steven pushing the pace, pushing his opponent against the fence. Beautiful strikes. But see there again, he starts opening up, but then got too aggressive. Again, he's able to get back up, but we'll see what happens here. That left hand is landing constantly. And I believe Steven Lohman's oh. nose is bleeding. Nice counter knee there by Felipe Efrain. Both these fighters wearing the battle scars on their face at the moment. Yeah, we see that swollen right eye of Felipe. Again, he's pushing forward, but he needs to keep on attacking. We see when he attacks, He's doing some significant damage. Well, again, we see Steven Lohman's nose now starting to bleed because of these significant strikes in the third round. Oh. 
Oh, Beautiful ooh. body kick. God, that hurt me. Wow. <laughs> 10 seconds to go here in round three. Time, gentlemen, how do you call it? This is turning into a back and forth battle. You know, that, that was a back and forth battle, but we look at it as who dominated more of the round. Yes, Felipe Efrain did damage at the end, but it was only one minute left. I personally give that to Steven Loman because he was active and moving and landing significant strikes for the majority of the round. I think we're all in agreement. Yep. We're looking at two rounds to one now with two rounds to go. We're heading into the championship rounds of this fight. Mind you, I think that round was close enough where some judges might give it to Felipe Efrain based on you know his forward pressure. But I do tend to agree with you guys that I do give that round to, to Steven Loman. Yeah, his forward pressure, and he, I think he landed more of the significant strikes. Yeah. You know, so it's a factor of what side do you like more. Hey, that last minute was Felipe's and landing some great damage. You see the blood as well, which I believe they do score. But again, Stephen Lohman worked the entire round and let one round or let one minute off. We just had some beautiful work by the cornermen here. I think repairing their fighters both physically, getting that bloody nose to stop bleeding, and also psychologically getting both sides fired up. I am anticipating one phenomenal fourth round of this fight. Mark Goddard making sure there's no water or ice on the ground. Could potentially cause an injury. Round four, here we go. And we see them after that third round just both taking a deep breath and going, Wow, this is an extremely hard fought fight. Again, they both need to really just, you know, bring it all together and start walking forward because you have, you know, yeah, you're finally in the championship rounds. These rounds are crucial, mainly for Felipe Ofrin, who is possibly losing this fight. I think based on that bloody nose, we are looking at a broken nose by the champ Stephen Lohman. That's the bad thing. Once you break something, it's more susceptible to breaking that much easier again. And Steven Lohman, I don't know how many times he's broken his nose after the very first Falambo, oh, Franz Malambo fight. I don't know if he's broken it before or even after. But the case is, once you injure something once, it's more susceptible to being injured again. And speaking immediately, it's going to make that breathing a little more difficult. You see his mouth opening now. Definitely not fun. Mm. Beautiful oh. combinations by both. And mixing it up, both of them going to the body as well. Efrain continuing to stalk, but a little more active than he was the previous round, as you saw right there. A beautiful right left. And you see how Steven Loman went for the double, but Felipe grabbed that guillotine. Steven immediately tried to circle out to the left side to finish it, but it was just too tight. He felt too dangerous and let it go. I believe it's one for 12 in takedown attempts so far for Loman. Loman using those long range wushu attacks. Oh, beautiful left hand. And again, why is Felipe landing that? Is because any time Felipe goes to counter or attack, Stephen Loman brings that right hand down and kind of does that Philly shell Mayweather style boxing, but he doesn't bring his shoulder up with it to defend those strikes. Double leg was shut down hard. And again, that's not fun to shoot in so many times and get defended constantly. You're putting all that work in a sense for nothing. Again, like you're saying, 12-1 on takedown attempts, or excuse me, one to 12 on takedown attempts. So, you know, what does Steven Lohman have to do? Again, as we said earlier, set it up with combinations, but he needs to make this a grueling fight. If he keeps this distance, Felipe is gonna keep on outstriking him, mainly with that big left hand. Oh, there you go. Finally happened, but can he keep him down? Nope. No, denied again. Did throw a nice straight left. 
Felipe just springs up. Uh, and he's just working. That's a hard thing for Steve Maloman. In a sense, he's doing all the work. He's taking these shots, getting defended. He's trying to throw combinations back. They're not landing. And he's circling the whole time because his back is against the fence. So he's the one doing most of the work here, but he's not the one causing the most damage. That's a really good observation. He's tried that kick a few times now, that front teep kick. And... I mean, why not? Even if it doesn't land, Felipe's not countering you, yep. nor is he taking you down or making you pay for it. So just keep on throwing it until possibly something bad happens. You know, some people learn through experience. I'm sadly one of those guys. You know, I won't, I'm going to keep on touching the stove until I get burnt. <laughs> and I still do it today. <laughs> Efrain having more luck with his stalking style. Down to 20 seconds. And he goes for her own shot. Again, it's a nice thing to mix it up. Mainly at the end of a round. Why not? That's it. That's it. End of that round. Gentlemen, we like to leap Ephraim in that round. Is that correct? I think so. That is correct. If we are right, which we may not be, we, in this final round, whoever wins this round, Wins the belt. Well, I mean, if we talk to my fiance, I am definitely never right. But it's the fact of no matter which way this goes, you have to look at it as 2-2. No matter what, you need to win this fifth round. It's always crucial. Maybe in such a close fight, honestly, if you look back at it, yes, rounds one and two were definite. But three and four could have gone back and forth to some people. It depends on how the judges looked at it. So that fifth round is definitely crucial for both, and it's amazing to see this fight last this long so far with both of them dazing each other and always doing damage. We're seeing both corners. These are two of the best corners in the world. You've got Chute Box representatives, Team Lakai representatives. They're getting their fighter ready for this crucial fifth and final round. In the absence of a stoppage or a tap out, we do believe that the winner of this round is the winner of the belt. We could be five minutes away from end new or end still. Drums are playing. Crowd is quiet. Last round. Steven Lohman opening it up with veracity, trying to really impose and win this final round. But he definitely needs to keep that right hand up because you see Felipe always oh. landing that left hand. We see that beautiful circle. Good job, a great, a phenomenal job by Felipe, your friend, of turning his body and getting out. For Loman's part, I love the way Loman shoots, and if it fails, he'll always, always come in with a hand or a foot. Oh yeah, you gotta make your opponent pay for either trying to go in for the shot or defending the shot, because it goes, hey, you defended my shot? Ah, oh, jerk, here you go. Should have been taken down. That hematoma on the right side of Felipe's face is really starting to uh, make itself known. Judges are gonna be looking at that, but they're also gonna be looking at the bloody nose coming from Loman. It's a nice fair trade, I believe. <laughs> oh! Beautiful straight right. In some senses, judging in combat sports comes down to who hurt who more. I can't tell you who hurt who more in this fight. They've definitely gone back and forth, and again, they're both being aggressive in their own certain way, and it's this is really an impressive fight, but now we have three minutes and 30 seconds left in the round. Felipe goes for his own shot. Loman doing a great job there defending. He's As trying to drive in. Grab that single. He locks his hands. He's trying to dump, but Steven Loman read that 
and he's pushing in very, very aggressive. Is he going to try to transition to the double? Doesn't really look like it because that left hand is over the butt. It is very high, so he's keeping that single. But he's going to pull and try to dump again. He gets that leg behind. That's what he tried to do there. This takedown, if it happens, could be huge, and it did not happen. Good job by Steven. Just reading that, knowing his body or his opponent's body was trying to lean that direction. Beautiful counter left. Again, that left hand by Felipe is always landing. Beautiful left from, from, from Steven. We're halfway through this round, ladies and gentlemen. And again, every minute, every second is crucial, but we hear the Filipino crowd just chanting for Stephen Lohman. Lohman responds to the crowd by landing two straight lefts and a deep kick to the belly. Loman's oh, a much more active fighter here. Left hand. Two more and a teep to the belly. And again, Felipe has to know that there's only two minutes left. He has to push the, the pace back because this happened, I believe, in the second round. So don't let it repeat again. You have to fight back, and your strikes do hurt Steven. So why not do them? Mainly if you're possibly losing this fight. Oh, low blow. Accidental low blow there by Felipe Fraín. Macarter will stop time. And again, all accidental, they both went to throw the head kick at the same time. One leg went over the other, went straight to the groin. Again, non-intentional, this stuff does happen. Under the unified rules of mixed martial arts, we're gonna get a chance to watch. Just like you said, Shorty, both of them went for the high kick. Completely accidental. Referee Mark Goddard, best in the business. Going to give the fighter as long as he needs to recover, up to five minutes. Completely accidental, unless that's what he wants you to think. But either or, again, it happened. What's done is done. They're pushing forward. Fighters touch hands, show there's no hard feelings. Good job there of evading that left hand of Ifrain. There's that straight left and teep kick that's worked so effectively for him. Felipe needs to be aggressive in this final minute of the final round. He needs to push the pace and really show he wants this belt, he deserves this belt. Felipe is always one for, for a, for, you know, for, to throw something completely unorthodox, so. Let's see what he can pull out of the hat here. Steven Lohman moving extraordinarily well. For someone who's been fighting 23 minutes. And at a very high pace for 23 minutes. Yep. Beautiful shot. Making his opponent go all the way to the other side of the cage and just pushing the pace. If he wants, he can grind the remaining seconds of this fight here. Beautiful hip toss attempt by Felipe Efrain. 10 seconds Both to go, ladies and gentlemen. You see how Felipe is just pushing forward. He wants to finish the fight out with a bank, but Steven moving appropriately that's it. well. And that's it. Great job. The two fighters embrace showing the sportsmanship that is so characteristic of Brave Combat Federation. Phenomenal gentlemen, fight. I have no idea who won that fight. Okay, that last round, if I, if I forced the pick, I would probably give it to Loman. I have Loman winning this 3-2. I, I definitely agree with that. Again, Steven Loman in that final round pushed the pace and showed why he's not just a great fighter, but the brave CF champion. And just, again, grinding forward, pushing the pace, and coming back from adversity mainly after that first round. The anticipation is at an all-time high level as the judges' scorecards are tallied. I think we all agree, absolutely, it's close enough so either party could take it. <laughs> Hearing this, you think that Loman is fighting in the Philippines. That's incredible.
It was a phenomenal thing, and it's such an impressive fight that both Sheikh Khalid, the CEO, Muhammad Shahid, and even Khabib Nurmagomedov is in the cage trying to award the belt. And the Filipino ambassador is also in the cage. Judges taking their time tallying the scores on this one. And again, a very close fight. You definitely need to make sure the score is right and everything is, is perfectly planned to make sure well, whoever wins is well deserved. Habib here having a few words with Felipe Efrain. Probably giving him props for that incredible takedown defense. Here comes Carlos Kramer. We are soon going to find out if it is and new or and still. Let's send it up. Over to our man in the cage. Give it up for Carlos Kramer. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for these two warriors. One of the best title fights we've had in Great Combat Federation history. After five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard. 